The fight for president continues with Al Gore planning to make a speech tonight, even after Florida named George W. Bush the winner. Plus, thousands are still trying to make it home after the long holiday weekend. That means more headaches at the airport. Plus, if you don't want to get stuck with a cholesterol test, you'll like a new test doctors are using. Those, can, those stories and more coming up next here on News Channel 15. People just plan a day trip to Goods. I mean, they're looking for furniture, but they're also looking for a day of relaxation and fun. Goods is a special place. We enjoy everyone that comes to Goods to see us, and we're grateful they've taken the time to do it. They come because they know it's laid back. They can have lunch, relax. Um, just gives them a good feeling. In Kewanee, Illinois. And they come for furniture, but they come for the fun of it. What would you pay at the mall for that? 40 bucks. And what do you pay here? 19.99. 19.99 under $20. 19.99. Yeah. 19.99 here. 19.99. Wow. For That's these overalls. What would you rather have as a gift? Uh, this name brand sweater, beautiful sweater for 19.99 or a yard of beef. <laughs> Gordman's. Brands you want, savings you deserve. The sweater. The sweater? <laughs> okay. Don't get caught up in the hustle and bustle this holiday season. Enjoy a relaxed shopping experience at Joseph Kuhn and Company. Fine men's clothing from Pendleton. Rift Valley. Eyes on and in row. Joseph Kuhn and Company, downtown Champaign. At NBC News Channel 15, your local news comes first. From WICD, where your local news comes first, this is the NBC News Channel 15 News at Noon. Airports and bus terminals are packed today because thousands of holiday travelers waited until today to head home. Good afternoon. I'm Doug Quick. We'll have more on that story in just a moment. But first, let's go to Keith Page for our first look at weather. Keith? Well, earlier today we were promising mostly cloudy skies. We've changed that. It's going to be overcast throughout the daytime hours. Temperatures dropping also to 36 degrees for daytime highs. Tonight it'll be partly cloudy with overnight lows getting down to 29. And then tomorrow will be partly sunny during the daytime hours, getting up to 44. But tomorrow night, there's a possibility of a major winter storm moving into the area. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the broadcast. Current temperature, 29 degrees. So look out. We may need the sleighs. We'll keep everyone posted. A 32-year-old Rantoul man arrested for sexual assault will be making his first appearance today in Champaign County. Johnny Colson was arrested late last night after police say he allegedly forced a woman into his car and he sexually assaulted her. Urbana police say the victim, a 25-year-old female, had a prior relationship with Colson. He is charged with unlawful restraint, aggravated battery, and criminal sexual assault. Colson is being held at the Champaign County Jail. Today, thousands are returning home from their Thanksgiving vacation. Many say today and yesterday are two of the busiest travel days of the year. Experts estimate 2.5 million people traveled by plane yesterday, and many passengers say they expected delays and problems at Willard Airport. Now, surprisingly, everything was running smoothly as of yesterday. American Airlines officials say that's because many more people will return today. We've gotten a little bit uh, wiser in their travel and decided, you know, Sunday is typically the day that's full and hard hard to get in and out of if you're traveling today officials recommend you arrive early in case of problems a Strasburg teenager is dead after his car collided with a utility pole state police say 17 year old Chad Rhodes car apparently left the road and hit a pole knocking it down police say Rhodes may have been disoriented when he climbed out of his car onto Clarksburg Road and touch the hot wires. The accident happened three miles south of Shelbyville around four o'clock Sunday morning. U.S. Supreme Court uh, has rejected appeals by two former Archer Daniels Midland Company executives. 
for accused of price fixing. Michael De Andreas and Terrence S. Wilson were convicted of trying to fix prices on a livestock feed additive. The appeal argued they were improperly convicted, but the high court turned down both appeals today without comment. Andreas and Wilson were convicted in September of 1998 of conspiring with Japanese and Korean competitors to fix the price of lysine. Andreas is serving a three-year prison term. Wilson is serving a sentence of 33 months. Well, a drug that got its start on the West Coast now appears to be rampant in the state of Illinois. Law enforcement officials say in just the last few years, they've seen a tenfold increase in the number of home-based labs where methamphetamine is made. Now, meth, as it is known, also goes by the street names of Crank and Ice. In 1997, authorities in Illinois turned up 24 meth labs. A new report from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America suggesting good and bad news about America's teens. The study found teenage marijuana use has dropped for the third straight year, but use of the club drug ecstasy is on the rise. The survey questioned more than 7,000 teenage students nationwide. It found 40% of teens surveyed said that they had tried pot. Now That's down slightly from the 41% of teens who said they'd tried the drug last year. The data also suggests the teen use of ecstasy has doubled since 1995, with one in ten teens admitting to experimenting with the drug. Well, the recounts are officially over, and even though Florida is named George W. Bush the winner, Al Gore won't concede. His legal team is fighting those results. Leanne Gregg has the latest from Tallahassee. George Bush arriving for work at the Texas State Capitol a day after Florida declares him the winner of the state's 25 electoral votes. Nice to see you all. And he says the presidency. Wasting no time, Bush announced his intention to name former Transportation Secretary Andy Card as his chief of staff. The governor is, is doing a terrific job of leading not only as the governor of Texas, but he's also a great leader during this transition period. And he knows how important it is that we move forward. He's getting ready to be a great president. Despite results, the fight goes on. The Gore team filing legal papers in the Leon County Courthouse to contest the election. They claim irregularities in Palm Beach and Nassau counties and Miami-Dade County's abrupt decision last week not to recount mean thousands of votes that should have been counted were not. We've said from the beginning, all we want is for the votes to be counted. If the votes are counted, that will be the election. The Democrats are also fighting a decision to reject the entire Palm Beach County recount. Election officials and counters worked around the clock during the weekend and came within a thousand votes of finishing. But because they missed last night's deadline, the Secretary of State threw out the new results. Bush attorneys plan to go ahead with their case in the U.S. Supreme Court challenging the legality of recounts. So for now, lawyers take center stage 20 days after the election, still disputing who is the 43rd president. The U.S. Supreme Court is scheduled to take up the manual recount issue on Friday, but today the Bush team filed a motion to postpone oral arguments until next Tuesday. University of Illinois Chancellor Michael Aiken wants to set up historical markers on campus. Aiken wants the markers to commemorate some of the people who had groundbreaking accomplishments at the university. Among the nominees is John Bardeen, who won two Nobel Prizes, Phineas Windsor, head of the U of I Library from 1909 through 1940, D.E. Jean Becker, professor of animal science who developed the first complete feed for pigs, and Samuel Kirk, who coined the term learning disabilities. Well, if you're afraid of needles and getting blood drawn, a new test is just for you, and it's an even better predictor of heart disease than the old method that left you bleeding. Then we'll show you how to get a head start on your child's dental health. And we'll be taking a look at a website that will help you remember the good old days. Tonight, 8, 7 Central, it's the Crocodile Hunter Special. Meet the man who knows no fear. You'll see a lot of biting and chomping. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Then, it's a special Monday Law & Order. Where's the panic, panic? Tom Berenger guest stars. You knew and you were angry. And on an all-new third watch in a rare television performance, Mia Farrow. Forget the bad. Get on with the good. The Crocodile Hunter, a special Law & Order and an all-new third watch. It all starts tonight, 8, 7 Central on NBC. On days of our lives, five big days you can't miss. A rescue at sea reunites family. Just come home. And 
one special night that changes everything. Maybe someday you'll love me the way I love you. I love you too, Brandon. Then, a fugitive on the run finally gets caught, and it all ends with a tragic twist. I'm right here, son. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. Days of our lives. It takes more than a helicopter to be rated a level one trauma center. It takes skilled trauma surgeons available 24 hours a day. Specialists in critical care, neurosurgery, and orthopedics. And the resources of an entire hospital ready in a heartbeat. It takes the trauma experts at Carl, the area's only hospital to raise trauma care to a whole new level. Level one. Carl, advancing the wonders of medicine. at Midday is sponsored by Carl, advancing the wonders of medicine. You're watching the news source for Champaign and Vermilion County, NBC News Channel 15. The news continues. High cholesterol levels are key indicators of heart disease. The current test for cholesterol levels involves fasting, drawing blood, and waiting for results, but that may soon change. Dr. Todd Husty reports on doctors who are testing cholesterol levels by using the palm of your hand. It's as easy as 123, or cholesterol 123. That's the name of this new test, which tests cholesterol levels of the skin. The amount of, amount of cholesterol on the skin surface seems to be a marker for the amount of disease you have in your coronary arteries. Cholesterol causes plaque that builds up in arteries. The more cholesterol, the more plaque. The more plaque, the more the arteries are clogged, which leads to heart disease, a heart attack, or stroke. Skin cholesterol is not the same as blood cholesterol, but researchers at the Cleveland Clinic say that skin cholesterol may be even more accurate in predicting heart disease. It takes just three minutes. After that, placing right? this strip on the palm, two drops of liquid are placed in the holes of the strip. After a few minutes, these drops change to a bluish color. A reader is used to measure the cholesterol level, which is then read out on a computer, giving us another way to test your risk of heart disease. By having yet another marker, it perhaps helps us to find better who needs additional testing. Maybe if you have a very low skin cholesterol test, maybe that's good enough to suggest that chances are your stress test will be negative. And Dr. Sprecher says his research also indicates that skin cholesterol can be used to monitor a patient's response to cholesterol-lowering drugs. I'm Dr. Todd Husty for NBC News. Isn't science wonderful, huh? It certainly is. I'm yeah. about to give you a demonstration. Okay. Pretend that this piece of paper is a flag and it's right. hanging from the pole. Okay. Now it's, there's no wind at all. See? Right. Now, when it gets into this position, that's uh -huh. what we call full horizontal position. Okay. You got that? Got it. Now, let's look at the question. Okay, here's the weather question. How fast is wind that makes a flag stream out in full horizontal position? 20 mile per hour wind, 30 mile per hour, or 40 mile per hour wind? We'll take a look at the answer to that and the weather next. It's a hip hop and live with Regis, with special guest co host Cisco. And the hills are alive. The legendary Julie Andrews tells Reg about her new book. Plus, feeling under the weather, indulging till you're bulging. Survivor star Dr. Sean Kniff shows you how to stay healthy and live longer. This is huge. It's Surviving Life Week, and it's all happening on Live with Regis, Tuesday morning at 9. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Sinfonia da Camera's 17th season at the Cranet Center for the Performing Arts. This season we celebrate the country of my birth with a garden of musical offerings from the British Isles. Sinfonia presents Joseph Haydn's masterpiece, The Creation, based on Milton's Paradise Lost. Golden days, fruitful of golden deeds, with joy and love triumphing, are recaptured for a holiday to remember.
On the next Montel, Robert and Jennifer cheated all the time. Now he won't even look at her new baby. I don't want to sit there and give my heart to a child that may, may not be mine. Susan was living with Nick while dating his best friend, Nate. Now she has twins. It's what? two years later and you still don't give After her affair with a younger employee, her husband wonders if the child he loves is really his. So I think it's time to figure this out. Today we get the truth. Paternity tests on the next Montel. Monday afternoon at 3. Luis and Sheridan's love was torn apart. No! This week, you'll always be in my heart forever. I'll never forget you. It's Sheridan's final farewell. Sheridan's gone. Rest in peace. Now Luis knows she'll be dead and buried. What's everything about her? Well, he's half right. Did you just hear that? Help! Somebody help me! Fatal farewell help! on Passions. Well, it's a gloomy day once again with cloudy skies. Heavy snow so early is an aberration. The forecast says tomorrow night could bring accumulation as much as two to six inches if the current computer model is accurate. And take a look at the wind chill, 11 degrees above zero. So even though we're at 29 officially, it feels like 11 degrees outside. That's pretty cold. Here's the precip cast, and it'll show you where this attack is coming from. You'll watch this development here that'll strike right through the state of Illinois and cover the northern half of the state as it's projected at least, and then move down as rain through the eastern Texas coast. And of course, the current radar model shows overcast conditions dominating the entire state except perhaps for extreme southern tip with a little light snow activity developing already in Minnesota and western Wisconsin. On the national map there is some light rain still affecting the New England area with some freezing rain on the western edges of that region. Of course much of the nation reasonably dry. Here is the uh, surface map and it's this system we're watching very carefully because it's going to be dragging those snows right down through the area. Now we have a number of different computer models about what's going to happen tomorrow night. If this system moves as is now predicted to the southern portions of Indiana, as I think you're probably well aware, the snows generally occur north of the system. So if that low pressure system ends up in southern Indiana by late tomorrow night, this is the area that's going to get the snow and that could mean two to six inches. The storm however is still 48 hours away so if there's any change in that direction we'll keep you posted right here at NBC News Channel 15. Here's the subtropical system and made a deep dive through the eastern portions of the country. Cold temperatures prevailing there and you can see it. Boy this is really pretty cold for this time of year and as you can see our forecast indicates that we're now reading 29 degrees, humidity 100 percent, winds are out of the west at 12, the barometer at 29.94. In terms of the uh, temperatures around the region. The coolest is 28 degrees in Bloomington, Cisna Park, and Decatur, 29 degrees in Rantoul, Champaign, Urbana, Danville, and Petersburg, and Paris, and 30 is the warmest at this hour. That's in Mattoon. Our high today, not too long after midnight, 33 degrees, and the low was 28 degrees. We've had no precipitation today, so the monthly total remains at 3 and 81 hundredths inches. Our highs today will only get up to 36 degrees, which is some change from what we predicted a little earlier today. And the overnight lows will drop to 29. We'll have partly sunny skies tomorrow, but by the time that storm system starts to move through tomorrow night, we're going to go into an overcast mode. Forecast looks like this. For today, we anticipate cloudy skies with temperatures right around 36 degrees for daytime highs. And then tonight, partly cloudy with the overnight low is 29. Tomorrow, we anticipate seeing partly cloudy with variably wi variable winds, uh, temperatures getting up to 44. But it won't last long because tomorrow night, if that projection holds, we're going to get into some storm, which will continue through Wednesday. However, it'll become partly cloudy on Thursday, then a mixture of rain and or snow on Friday, back to partly cloudy on Saturday. So if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. Yeah, on again, off again, a little bit of a winter preview. That's right. And now let's take a look at today's question. All right. Here it is. How fast is wind that makes a flag stream out in full horizontal position? Okay, as I travel about, I see those big flags at the gas stations, which yes. I think are beautiful anyway. But 20 mile an hour is my guess. Would be your guess? Yes. Well, I don't know that it would stand out full of horizontal. I think the answer is B. 30 miles per hour is what it takes for a full horizontal display. And hopefully it won't be that windy anytime soon. <laughs> That's right. All right. 
Well, most parents want what's best for their kids, and by paying attention to your child's dental health at a young age, you can help them achieve their best smile later in life. Honey, turn off the light. Has this ever happened to you? Introducing the Clapper, now with LED indicator lights. Clap your appliances on or off. Clap on the music. Clap on. For places hard to reach, the Clapper makes it easy. It comes with an extra feature to make your home more secure. Your lights turn on at the first sound of unwanted guests. The Clapper, convenience and security in one. Available at Osco, Walgreens, Kroger, and Pomida. Welcome to Spotlight 15. Our guest is George Edwards, representing the Oakland Old Fashioned Christmas on the Square. Coming up, George, give us a few details. The Oakland Old Fashioned Christmas on the Square will be December 2nd. The time will be from 10 to 6 o'clock. And we'll have activities going on. The Tree and Sweets Expo will be in the Museum of Christian Heritage, uh, Christmas Bazaar in the Columbian Building. There'll be uh, reenactors at the Hiram Rutherford House, which is a historic uh, home there in Oakland. There'll be a house tour from 10 to 4, and a lot of activities going on in town. Sounds like a full day. Dates, times, and location, how do we get there? Uh, it's December the 2nd, uh, times from 10 to 6, and uh, we're located uh, east of Arcola on uh, Route 133, exit at exit 203. We're about 15 miles uh, straight east. And there's a telephone number to call for more information? The phone number is 346-2653. All right, George, thanks for being with us on Spotlight 15. I'm Doug Quick. Got regrets? She wasn't the type of woman that I wanted to settle down with. Got requests? I wanted my computer back. I wanted the couch and love seat. The case of the exasperated exes. His words to me were, I won't sue you if you give me your camera. I have the box. He has the camera. But what do you want in this lawsuit? I want half of the credit card bill. We made half that bill. Got bills. Somewhere, some way, someday, someone must pay. Next, Judge Mills Lane, Tuesday morning at 11.30. New findings suggest you may now be able to predict a baby's dental future. Lucky Severson explains how. Is this a dental checkup or peering into a crystal ball? Brandy Heckel, the mom, hopes it's a little of both. Any way to prevent cavities, it would be, certainly be wonderful. <laughs> A new study from the University of Michigan suggests that baby teeth hold clues to a child's dental future. Open up a little bit. Bottle feeding can cause cavities in the front teeth, but a poor diet and poor brushing leads to cavities in back teeth. Researchers say when cavities form back here, kids more than double their risk of cavities in their permanent teeth. You know how hard it is to stop a bad habit. So taking a child that comes in at three and trying to change their diet and uh, hygiene practices is usually a, a bigger battle. After years of disappearing cavities, dentists now say that more than half of six to eight year olds have tooth decay. So do 20% of two to four year olds. We may be headed back to the old days of drill and fill. Trips to the dentist should start on a child's first birthday. Okay. And these trips are really for their parents who learn to wipe a baby's gums and how to brush their first teeth. Kids need help brushing until they're age eight. Can you do it? Brandy Heckel says she'll do anything to ensure her kids grow up with a healthy smile. You just want the best for your kids. Is brush time fuss time? To learn how to get around the brushing blues and to watch this story online, log on to the internet at healthsurfing.com. I'm Lucky Severson reporting. And in agricultural news this afternoon, German officials agreed Saturday on emergency measures to fight mad cow disease, including an immediate ban on the use of meat and bone meal in all animal feed. The quick agreement came after the first two German-born cows tested positive this week for that disease. Contaminated meat and bone meal in animal feed is suspected as the source of the disease in the cows. Well, inventors may not have the secret to a time machine just yet, but there is something pretty close. You can take a trip to the past with a click of a mouse. But first, here are this afternoon's farm prices, courtesy of the Andersons.
and real people I never wanted to hurt you have real problems she says she's not lying I think that she's lying they need real help who had the adulterous affair they both have that's where I come in I'm Dr. Irvin Walkoff join me as I take you into the homes and lives of real people in conflict. He thinks that I've cheated on him. It's unscripted. You must end this marriage. Unrehearsed. How could you tell her you loved her? It's House Calls. Pioneer grows about six foot. This high. One time I thought it would just hit the combine's top. How about this high? My grandpa grows. Eight thousand, six, seven, eight years of corn. Twenty, about a thousand bushels per acre. A lot. Great for your bottom line. However you keep count. Corn hybrids from Pioneer. Are you done talking? Yep. Mr. Airplane, Robert Hayes, Sexy Sydney Margolis, and our celebrity panel uncover the real body language expert. I speak full of body. I'm sure, it's one, two, or three. <laughs> On the next to tell the truth. It's party time at Newman's. Come celebrate the millennium with Newmanium. But Jerry's not invited. I gotta invite Jerry. He's my buddy. The next millennium must be Jerry free. <laughs> News Channel 15 and McDonald's are pleased to present Instant ID, the microfilm identification program. Who needs Instant ID? Youngsters who play on Little League teams. Children who attend daycare or stay with babysitters. Kids who are busy just being kids and their parents for the peace of mind Instant ID gives. Instant ID is also great for active adults. The cost is minimal, the protection invaluable. Get your Instant ID today. A Rantoul man accused of sexual assault will be arraigned today. We'll have the latest on that case coming up tonight at 6 on NBC News Channel 15. Plus, local landowners have produced a documentary centered around the Miami Indian tribe. We'll have those stories and more coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. And more about a, could be a, an iffy forecast. Could be a nasty storm be coming in Tuesday night, tomorrow mm -hmm. night. But now we have just cloudy skies. A little bad news there with temperatures only getting up to 36 degrees. Okay, thanks a lot, Keith. Mm -hmm. Well, the mess over the presidential election and all of the debates surrounding it leaves many wishing for the good old days. Well, PC Mike Wendland has found a special website that takes you back there by looking at old advertisements. The site is called adflip.com and is going to keep you up late, eavesdropping on the pop culture of previous eras by browsing through the world's largest searchable database of classic print ads. You can search by category, by decade, even by year, like the year you were born, or your parents or grandparents. Here's a neat feature. The What Are You Looking For search box allows you to type in a brand name and even a specific model name. Now, the site won't guarantee that you'll always get a match, but you may be surprised at what's lurking deep in there. For random nostalgia, try the Today's 10 for a humorous look that lets you see ads that you might not find through a conventional search. The ads change every 24 hours, and though we laugh today, they really were quite chic back whenever. And then there's the My Flip feature that puts ads from all decades into categories that have a common theme, like the whatever happened to look at out-of-date products. Look over enough of these ads, and chances are you'll conclude with a smile, well, maybe, maybe it isn't so bad today after all. Well, does this sound like something you'd be interested in? I've made it easy for you to find out more information. Just head on over to my PC Mike page on the World Wide Web. There's my address right there on your screen, and you'll find direct links to everything I just showed you. Till next time, I'm PC Mike Wendland for NBC News. Well, I would imagine this uh, possible impending snowstorm for Tuesday night and Wednesday is getting a lot of talk. We'll have the weather forecast for you, an update coming up with Jerome with Live, with five, live at 5. And then, of course, tonight at 6 and 10 here on News Channel 15. On behalf of Keith and myself, have a great afternoon. Today's closed captioning is brought to you by Nissan.
recently, American Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac was sold by the Smith family to George M. Pazeski. In celebration, American is having a gigantic inventory elimination sale for six days only. To thank our valued customers, we're giving everyone a $1,500 inventory elimination voucher. Six million dollars in new and used vehicles will be available for immediate delivery. Take advantage of the biggest rebates of the year on 2001 S10s and Cavaliers, November 24th through the 30th and only at American Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac in Danville. News Channel 15's community calendar. The First Baptist Church of Muhammad is hosting a craft and bake sale and a chicken noodle dinner on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call 586-2314. The Oakland Old Fashioned Christmas on the Square will be held on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The event includes tree and sweets at the museum, a Christmas bazaar, pioneer and actors, and a house walk. Call 346-2653. Farmer City Genealogical and Historical Society is sponsoring a house walk on Sunday, 1 to 5 p.m. It starts the museum downtown. The Cranard Art Museum Family Fest will be held on Sunday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be a children's work of art, entertainment, and an African-American storyteller. The Monticello Junior Women's Club is sponsoring the Jolly Shop, a children's choice Christmas on Saturday, December 5th, and Sunday, December 12th at the Monticello Community Building from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information, call 687-5046. Gardening is always in season at Morning Dove Farms.